Hi folks, this is Paul Soares Jr. and this is my Indie Games Test Drive. And today I'm going to take a look at Dungeons of Dreadmore. This is the beta version which I have been invited to partake in. The name of the company is Gaslamp Games and their website is gaslampgames.com. I'll put a link to that website in the description for this video. Okay, here's how we do this. I'm going to jump right into the game. I've played it a few times. I've got the general idea of how the game is played, but let me give you a very quick overview. It's essentially an, a roguelike. A roguelike is a dungeon crawl. So you create a character, you head down into randomly generated dungeons. There are multiple levels, and there's treasure, monsters, traps, magic. There's even crafting in this one. There are some shops you can buy and sell in the dungeons and so forth, and um, I have played this a few times just to get the general idea, but we're going to hop right in and get down and dirty, and we're going to see this firsthand. That's what this is all about. Indie Games Test Drive is not a tutorial. I'm not trying to teach you the game. I just want to show you the game, give you an idea of how it plays, and then you guys can decide if it's something that's worth your time. So let's hop right in. Let's go now. Okay, first things first, we're going to choose New Game. I'm going to choose my difficulty here. I'm going to stick with the moderate difficulty and I will go with permadeath because that's how I roll baby I fear nothing all right choose my skills I have played maybe a dozen times so far I've died every single time in glorious battle I find that warriors will last a little longer in the beginning of the game at the very least because they're slightly hardier than the wizard brethren so I'm gonna choose some warrior skills so based on the skills you choose here it will have a permanent effect on your stats in the game. So I'm going to go with a melee character. So I'm going to be fighting up close. So I'm going to choose swords, axes, and maces. So that way, if I find any one of those types of weapons, I will be proficient in them. I will also choose Master of Arms. As you can see, there are plenty of skills to choose from. If you want to just choose a random character, you click Random Skills. I like Berserker Rage. I like Viking Wizardry. And I have one more remaining. So why don't we choose, um, I want to do crafting. Let's do alchemy, because I want to show you how the crafting works. Now any character can craft in the game. I will be a little bit more proficient at it if I take the skill and I will start out with an alchemy kit. So that way I can show you. You can find the kits in the game, but at least this way I can get it right done quickly. All right, now I need a name. And I'm going to call my character here. I already have a Bobby Collins going. Oh, God, I think I do. Let's try. Oh, okay, it did take Bobby Collins. Bobby Collins is someone from my past. Very recent past. In ages long past, great heroes bound the Dark Lord Dreadmore in the depths of the earth that is evil would trouble the land nevermore. Alas, the foul lich Dreadmore proved most devious and patient, for he has been loosening his magical bonds, slowly freeing himself to gain Again, spread his evil in the world of light. He must be stopped. Again. So, yep, very light on the backstory. We're going to hop right in. You know, the whole gist of this game is to find stuff in the dungeon, kill things in the dungeon, craft things in the dungeon, and have a good time. It's very tongue-in-cheek. It's hilarious. I'm having a lot of fun with this so far. It's all turn-based. So, as you can see... Start out here in the main part of the dungeon. This is all generated randomly with the exception of a few things here. I think the food dispenser is actually new in the beta. This is the first time I've seen it. And if I left click, it looks like I can make food purchases. Zork mids, that's the currency of the game. And I can purchase food, but I have no Zork mids at the moment. Food. It is turn based, so if I sit here and do nothing, nothing happens in the dungeon. As I move, things may move around me and time passes. Let's take a look at the interface very quickly. Here's my portrait. As time goes on and I take damage, I will get beat up very much like the Doom portrait. The old game Doom. Here we have our menu. Save and quit, pretty much it. Character, my name, and here is my things I have on, my garb. And as you can see here, based on the choices I've made in the skills, that determines the number of levels I have in each archetype. So I mostly chose warrior skills, so I have mostly levels in warrior. 
and that will tell you this right here. If you click on these little question marks, it gives you a basic idea of what each thing does. So I have one in wizard, which was my Viking wizardry, and I have one rogue, which is, I think, alchemy. This will show me my melee attack bonuses. Now the icons, many of these icons have tooltips which will pop up and show you what they do. These are my permanent statistics here, my primary statistics. So I have burliness, sagacity, nimbleness. Now each one of these will directly have some kind of an effect on your secondary skills, which is this big lump of things here with all these icons. Caddishness, savvy, and stubbornness. So this is basically like strength. This is your wizard, your mana um, skill. So if you're a wizard, you want lots of sagacity. Nimbleness would be for rogue. Caddishness, I'm not sure about. Savvy, not sure about. Bard, hmm. stubbornness, not really sure about those. So I'll have to look those up. And over here, again, they're all directly impacted by these primary skills are the secondary skills. We have melee power, criticals, counter chance, etc. Armor absorption, blocking, wand use. There's a whole bunch. And here's my crafting skills. Down here we have life, which is represented in this bar, and mana, represented by the blue bar here. All standard RPG dungeon crawl fare. Over here we have our skill bar. Okay, spell and skill bar, right. And if you click on one, you can put it in this active, oh, hang on there, Mr. Bobby. This is your active skill or item. You can add to this bar by clicking the plus and dropping things down. I only have one skill at the moment. That's any, that's useful, which is my power of magic steel. To use this, you right click. And over here you'll see the active icon here which shows me that I have this magic steel now is active and it's essentially a buff and it buffs here as you can tell by these icons that just appeared I now have some extra resistance ranged attack and this does some kind of a lightning attack I'm not sure I think I have resistance to lightning attack or something all right now let's get rid of that Go right down the line here, inventory. Now, as you can see, I start with uh, alchemy box. If I right click on that, I can click on the recipe book, and this shows me all the recipes. That doesn't mean I have the ingredients to make these things yet. I have to find them along the way or make the ingredients. So if I locate some salt, some oil of vitriol, chalk, and bituminous coal, I can make myself some aqua fortis. And aqua fortis is used in other recipes. Pretty cool stuff. Now these are all the various presses and smithing kits that you can find along the way. Not sure if I actually have them now or if I have to find them. Maybe one kit gives me them all. I'm not really sure. We'll have to take a look at that. But as you can see, they all offer various crafting options. So there's the tinkerer, which you make different parts and things. Here we have the anvil to make armor. And this is a porta still. You get the idea. Okay, well, I start out with some basic tools and weapons and a few potions. Okay, let's get rid of that. All right, now my skills. These are the skills I chose at the beginning sword play, and I, obviously, I can increase my proficiency here over time as I level up and these are the skills that these the the ones that I've chosen so far thick skin these are all automatic when I chose the skill potions 101 and as I advance I will unlock new skills right now I have zero skill points to assign until I level up and quests I have no quests at the moment See if we can find some. Movement is via WASD keys, W A S D. Left click to swing and hit. Ah, inside that box was a fell truffle. Fell truffle is the only mushroom in the world that can leap out of the ground and throttle a truffle hunting pig. 
So there's a little humor here. You can pick it up with one left click, and drop it on your character, or I believe you can just double click as well. Kendall's not sure what they do. Okay, let's move over here. We'll head to the door. Get boot. Aha, our first enemy. It's a little batty. Attack monster. It's an attack monster. It's a bat. It flaps. It has teeth. This monster has not noticed your presence. So if I'm sneaky, I can leave, but, well... What? Of course it has. So I'm gonna hit it anyway. Ah, my Berserker Rage had kicked in. So I've got four turns of Berserker Rage, which adds to... my skills. Here, my secondary stats, rather. So I've got a little extra... and it tells you right here if you point to the buff. You get a little extra burliness. A little extra melee power, etc. So I'm gonna use that and take advantage of it now. Oop, it's gone. That was fast. Now, who is this gentleman? Hello, sir. Okay, this is interesting. This is new. I've never seen this before. Again, this is all randomly generated. Buy something, will ya? Like, looks like this is, um... Shield of your Viking ancestors. This must be the shop that I heard about. I had not seen the shops before. Um, I don't think I have the cash. In fact, I have zero cash, so this will not work. Not sure what happens if I take it, but I'm not ready to die. Alright, let's go over here and see if we can find some more goodies. So essentially, this game is about exploration, fighting, crafting, and getting your butt kicked. And death. <laughs> and that's how easy it is to die. The game is rather challenging and it doesn't pull any punches, that's for sure. Now notice my face got all beat up. Hero boy. Oh boy, this is gonna hurt, isn't it? So I have died. And I get my little headstone here and it tells you your score and the level of the dungeon. I didn't even get out of level one. I didn't even get to level one. And I was killed by a sickly diggle. Four diggles, no matter how tough you are, will indeed cause you some pain. Let's load up a game. Bobby Collins. This is my other Bobby Collins. This Bobby Collins has not died yet. Just to give you an idea of the next level of the game. So I left Bobby Collins underground in level... I believe I'm on level 1. Oh, I'm on level 2. Yeah, we're just going to go around here and check some stuff out. Pull a lever. So something happens. Over here you can see... This gives you a little bit of an indication of what's going on around you. Now this, a statue of Dreadmore. I... Said something. What did he say? Next time I'll try not to talk. Dr. Sannon's new style pills now. As you drink alcoholic beverages, they usually re restore mana. Now, where did that go? Went onto my belt bar. Oh, I didn't even talk about the belt bar. I'm sorry. All right, belt bar. That's what this is. So if you click on the question mark down here, it tells you this is your belt bar. Ammunition can go in here if you want to fire things such as crossbows or throw weapons. Wands as well. Food can go here um, also, and if you hold down the shift and hit that key, it's mapped to that key. For example, if I wanted to eat, let's eat, oh, let's have one of these Dr. Sannon. So shift seven or right click. There we go. Swig it down and it restores some mana. Now, I'm going to right click and use my power of magic steel to buff myself. And I have a really nice weapon that I found, although I'm not too sure about it because it, had, it, it gives me some kind of evil, it's got some evil icons here and I don't know what those mean. I suppose I'll find out. Right, let's check out. This one's locked. Well, that stinks. Place your equipment on the Sacred Anvil of Krom. Let's try that. Whoops. Can I do that? Whoa. All exaltations unto Krong. He is pleased by you. Blessed be you, for Krong has added new powers to your artifact. Now, I don't know if that was such a good idea for that particular weapon, because it was cursed. 
Although, maybe that'll counter the curse. Not too shabby. But, oh, the Krong Anvil has already been used once. I've depleted its magic energies. If you find Zork Mids on the ground, you can just walk right on them. Ah, uh, bookshelf. When you find bookshelves, you click on a bookshelf and it will add a new recipe to your crafting abilities. So let's see, I have a disposable ingot press with this with this Bobby Collins. And let's see if it added that looked like some kind of armor. Pleather? Pleather armor. Very nice. So plastic ingots make pleather armor. There it is. So it added plastic plate mail recipe. So I need pleather and two more pieces of plastic and I'll get plastic plate mail. Beautiful! And look at this thing. The omnipotent pork sword. It's like a shish kebab. Cool. I need cubes of flesh and a rough iron sword. Not very difficult to come by down here, I'll tell you. All right, so here's where we have choices to make. This is like when you're playing D&D and Dungeon Master says, you find a fountain and you either drink or don't drink. What do you say? I'm going to drink. There are little mushrooms growing in the water. How cute. Also disgusting. What happened? Azure magics. You are imbued with arcane azure-hued magics. Mages love azure. They do. So what did this give me? It gave me some kind of plus. Oops. Character. Skull. A blue skull. Oh, sagacity. Okay, great. So it increased my magical powers. Elven ingot grinder. I'll take that. Let's see what that does. Grind. I'm not sure what. I haven't used any of this yet. Oh, okay, so I can grind ingots into powders. That will come in handy. I actually have an ingot, a zinc ingot. Well, let's look around. Oh, oh, ooh, trap. Disarm the trap. There's a trap here. Now, my trap skill isn't very, my detect skill isn't very high. Had I chosen some roguish skill, my trap affinity is a zero. Although sometimes I can see them. I'm going to try to disarm this one. Got it. Didn't do any good. I already stepped on it anyway. Take a swig. Ooh, look at this armor. What is it? It's foppish tunic. So you have to be careful what you put on. So I have a leather caress now. Foppish tunic. Wearing this tunic will make you the dandiest fop in all the land, which I cannot resist. Some armor will have an adverse effect on your magic capabilities. What is that? Eyeball Shrine. As you can see, the that dungeon is just loaded with goodies and things to play with. It gives me an eyeball. I've got an eyeball. Eyeball must be... I don't see an eyeball. Used in some kind of... Can I get another one? Gives me another eyeball. Maybe they're used... Plum. In, um, in crafting, but I don't even see it. Interesting. Pressure plate. So you can use pressure plates to build things. I've already gotten those bookshelves. Merlot. Lots of cheeses. Alright, I want to get down to the next level. The level. What's this? So let's kick down some doors. Ow! Alright, I'm going to eat a tomato. So the tomato, well fed, it adds three. So it regenerates one hit point per turn, and it lasts for three turns. Now, I don't know how to get the tomato. I suppose. Oh, I can just kick him down. Oh, nice. nice. Shift click on the ground will pick things up. Oh, now, baby. It is dead. It's an enraged diggle. Strange little bird thing. So let me give you a quick 
overview of what's going to happen with this game. Um, it's almost released. It's going, going to be released very soon as per the developer. What very soon means, I don't know. Apparently it's going to have a price tag of less than 10 bucks. Not sure how it's going to be distributed. Um, I would imagine directly at gaslampgames.com. Just keep an eye on their website if you're interested in the game. I've got a list of things that will be added or already have been added. I don't know how old this list is. Let's see. I don't really say anything about the dun randomly generated dungeon levels. We know that each skill has from three to eight sub levels you can upgrade. You select seven skills from 34. We knew that. Ten varieties of cheese this is crafting. Okay, I think we, I think I've already covered all of this stuff. Around 500 unique item graphics. I think I've discussed all of that stuff already, so let's just see if we get a little farther in the dungeon. Keep this thing. Oh, who's this guy? Death. Some dude with a little Zombie. Oh, I may sort of make quick work of him. Ooh. Zorkmids. Zorkmids. And another little electro blobby. Ooh. I'm in for a shot. Hit skill. That's my block skill in action. Oh, hematite. Hematite? Hematite? Some kind of ingredient. Aquamarine. Ah, dungeon down. Let's have a little. Ooh, loot fisk. Nice. Doesn't restore a whole lot of hit points, though, does it? Right, let's eat this. Now I'm well fed. 22 hits. Right click. I really want to get some more magic. Oh, and this bar right here is my experience bar, so I'm nearly going to um, level up. So let's head down to dungeon level three, the wormhole of altars. Oh, by the way, this character has a quest. Defeat Zan Shafar, the Knight's Razor. Knight's Razors and use Malacralic, the miscalibrated cake on the eyeball shrine. Oh! I have to find some miscalibrated cake. And then go back to the eyeball shrine. Okay, that's hard to click. It's, don't like this green goo. Can't walk on it, can I? Open the chest. Potion of stealing. Spelled with two E's. Okay. Take that. I just take everything, I don't know. I haven't really looked at the crafting much. I'd rather just run around and fight stuff for now. I'll get to the crafting eventually. I don't think I have enough stuff to craft with anyway. Ow! Ah, uh, I missed a trap. Well, I didn't miss it. I didn't. I didn't. Didn't detect it. I definitely didn't miss it. Is this a door? Oh, another one. So it looks like I can just barely see them just before I step on them. So I, I suppose. Walking slowly is the right thing to do. This chest is locked. Bash it open. Yay! A bow staff. I'm not sure I need a bow staff. I'm not very proficient in staves, but I'll take it anyway. Pressure plate. Now, if I was a rogue, or even if I'm not a rogue, I'm sure I can create traps. You can create traps and drop them. And try to trap things. Or harm them, depending on the type of trap. What is that? A meat block? Let's go get that block of meat. I can craft a, a blocky meat sword. But how? How? How to get there? I can't cross this stuff. Interesting. There is apparently some kind of teleportal devices. Oh, okay. Just have to walk. Huh. Pyrite. Now, I'm going to have to go back and sell some of the stuff. I don't even know if the merchant's on my level. I haven't found him. What is that? Harmless red cube, but I can't pick it up. I probably have to do something with it. Cube appears to be docile. Right now, anyway. I wouldn't trust it. Oh, I did the same 
thing again. Aqua Vitae. Building block. Okay, this is just used in recipes. Do I have any more cheese? I can put it in my quick bar. My belt. No. Oops. That was a waste. Oh! It's a sanguiblabby. Yeah. Look at this guy, Dijin. He probably pretty tough. He's light, cheerful, and utterly non-biodegradable. <laughs> okay, let's just find out how cheery he is. Oh, I have a knockback. That was sweet. Gives me a quick break. Level up, meddling kid. All right, now I must learn a new skill. Click on the tome, and let's go to Viking magic. I want to see if I can learn a new skill, a new magic skill. Oh, this would be nice. If I had ranged weaponry, this would be great. Skatha's Roots. These summon roots stop your foes dead in their tracks. Also, with the crushing of the throat and all that. <laughs> throat crushing is fun. Alright, so let's see. We have... This only lasts five hits. Magic Steel. Put this here. And let's try it on somebody. Oh, look, it's a plastic thingy. The roots. Now, if I had... Oh, the roots hurt, too. That's true. That's good. I go and wait for him to get a little more hurt. Does he level? Does he heal up as he walks? Space bar is... Done for. Oh, I can close doors, too. God, there's roots. It's dead. Oh, he's still affected by the roots. Nice. Even in death. Ouch! Right, let's eat a diggle egg. I think diggle eggs can be used for something. Oh, a bolt of squid. Let's try that. Oh, if you want to put an item as an active item, you right click it and it shows up over here. I haven't figured out the usage. Apparently, they don't last forever. Whoa, this guy is throwing stuff at me. Shock. Some kind of brain creature. Octo, spell casting cephalopod. Ooh. Make calamari out of them. This monster is trying to kill you. No crossbow! Bolt of squid. What do you mean, no crossbow? I have a crossbow. It's a small crossbow. Perhaps I need a large crossbow. <laughs> no! 201 gold. I died. Slowly. There's got to be some kind of a healing potion. Now, the food is great. It'll heal you up over time, but it's not fast enough for, to use in combat. So, there must be... I haven't really looked around. There's got to be some kind of instant health potion. Congratulations, you have died. Yes, thank you. Ah, that might be my highest score right there. Bobby Collins, the clubber, killed by a octo in Moonbase Dreadmore Alpha Level 2. I was only level 2. Score 1704. That was my highest score. Beat Bullvie. A couple of zeros there. Rather embarrassing. And that's pretty much Dungeons of Dreadmore. The basics. I ain't done. Let's take a look at some of the skills here. Let's, um, astrology. Golem. Let's make golems. Vampirism. Let's make ooh, assassination. Necronomicans. Necronomicans. All right, where's magic guy? I want to do magic. Perception. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's just pick Gollum. I got Gollum. Promethean magic. Let's just do lots of magic stuff. Magic training. Blood mage. I'm gonna let's just check out some I'm magic man. I just want to see some magic skills. Yes, indeed, 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 do. Oh, a baseball. Softball. Cool. I can throw it. Getting hit with one of these hurts more than you might imagine. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what I like about this game. There is quite a bit of humor. And I want to throw. Oh, 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 wait. We're animate Blade Being. That's a golem, I would imagine. Radiant Aura. Dragon's Breath. Yeah, play with that, fools. I hurt him. It didn't last, though, did it? Let's try Dragon's Breath. 
Oh yeah, look at that. Power of magic. Yeah, roast, roast down that, buddy boy. I just run away while he roasts. Ow. Magic is good and powerful and hurts things. Oh shoot. Mug of beer here and get some more magic. Looks like my fire's kind of a slow killing tool. I will kick you. What else do I have? Radiant Aura. Deathly Hex. Let's try that. Ooh! That seemed rather effective. Oh, look, I can disarm now. Nice. What do I have here? Lingering weak. What? I guess I didn't disarm that drone. Ow, something, something bad's happening. Oh! <laughs> Minor blood debt. All right. I don't think I disabled that trap. I think it got me. And I didn't really pay much attention to what's happening. I, I think paying attention is a good thing. That might help the survival here. Um, hey, did all right, Magic Man. 152. Middle of the road. So, there you have it. Dungeons of Dreadmore. Head on over to GasLampGames.com and check it out. It's in beta right now. I don't think it's available without a beta key. But uh, you can join in discussions in the forums and keep an eye on the blog. And again, I, my understanding is it is to be released, quote, very soon. That was the last I'd heard. So very soon could be, um, well, could be next week, could be a month, I don't know. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I may do more of these. I, I enjoy the game. I do play it a little bit. And I'm going to play more. In fact, I'm going to play more right now. I'm on fire. I think I can reload. No. I think he was a permadeath guy, wasn't he? Oh, no. Sweet. All right. Bobby Collins. When I created Bobby Collins, for this, I was going to do it for this video, I unchecked permanent death. So I can continue loading him back up at the same point where I left him off. All right, so his progress can be saved. Very nice. See, here I am, my foppish tunic. So when you save and quit, you can load Bobby Collins back. Nice, okay. The other ones, these are actually from an older beta version. They don't work anymore and there's no delete as of yet in the menu. So I have to go in and delete those manually in the folder. But anyway, so there you guys go. And gals, Dungeons and Dreadmore. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time with the next Indie Games Test Drive. Bye-bye.